Hello everyone and a very warm welcome here from our Digital Enterprise Experience Center in Munich. My name is Christoph and I'm a Mindsphere Solution Architect. And I'm Konstantin. I'm focusing on the topics AR and IoT. And today we would like to show you how we connected our bottling machine, which does some end-of-line tests uh, to test these plastic bottles for leakage to our Mindsphere platform and to an AR, AR application. We will show you in four steps how in step number one, we set up the connectivity from the machine, from the field to Mindsphere. In step number two, what we do on Mindsphere to connect to the AR application. Step number three, we'll show you the authoring environment of our IoT integration into augmented reality. And in the fourth step, we would like to show you the integration of the IoT data in the AR application. So let's get started. So the question is, how do we actually connect this physical machine to the virtual world, to the cloud? And using Mindsphere, the answer is quite simple, because Mindsphere offers us out-of-the-box gateways like this one. It's a MindConnect Nano, which automatically connects us to the field devices, to our drives, to our PLCs, basically everything which controls the machines, so that we can collect our data there. And then on the other side, the MindConnect automatically transfers the data to Mindsphere in a secure way. It is stored there, and then we can make use of the data in applications, or we can integrate it to our AR application. And in the next step, I will show you how we did that. All right, so I'm now here in front of my computer already logged into my Mindsphere tenant. We can see that I do have different applications here. In the asset management, I specified the connectivity to the Nanobox and all data to be collected from the PLCs. And if we now open the Fleet Manager, um, I preloaded that one here already, and search for quality machines connected to my tenant and uh, choosing the machine located in Munich, I can see the time series data which is transferred after I select the parameters I want to have a look at. On the right-hand side, to do so, I find the data model which we specified for the machine to structure all data. And if I knew now select some of the data which is transferred, we can see in the time series view where they are currently located. And I get the option to drill down and get some first visual analytics uh, on how the machine is currently behaving. I want to integrate that data to our AR application. And to do that, I set up a custom flow in the Visual Flow Creator, another out of the box application for Mindsphere to specify a custom API endpoint which we can call from the AR application. To do that, I have specified an endpoint already, which we want to use. And now all I need to do is choosing with the read time series node what machine data we would like to read. So I choose the quality test machine we saw earlier. I choose the data which we would like to transfer to the AR app. I set up the last value to only be integrated and be made available. And then I need to connect the nodes together to each other to make the flow work. I save that one. And now every time I'm working against this API endpoint, I get a JSON response with the current uh, data which is received. So let's test that. I open a new browser window and I enter the URL. And voila, we can see the data being available here. So Constantine JSON structure with a bad counter with the bottle counters and belt speed available, so shows how we can integrate that in the AR editor. Thank you, Christoph, for that very interesting insight. In the next step, I would like to show you how we integrate the IoT data in our AR application. Therefore, we switch into the authoring environment rapid manual. First of all, we need to locate the IoT data. We do this by defining it in the XML document. Then we need to set up the JSON path to make sure the right value is shown. Third step would be to specify an interval in which the IoT data is updated. Additionally, we can also determine a threshold. Before publishing, we need to make sure that the ID in the XML document matches with the ID from the callout object. When we finished this step, the last step, step that remains is the publishing. So that's it. As we have now finished the authoring step, we now wanted to have a look at the results. Therefore, I'm already inside the Reflect One Viewer application. 
And now, going into the scenario we have created. You can follow me on that process. First of all, I will start with the object-based tracking. As you can see right now, this works pretty well. So we do have an overlay between the real and the virtual world. So first of all, I wanted to have a look at different components and see some more details on that. This is also part of this point of interest topic. But more or less interesting is the fact that we have integrated IoT data directly into that application. Therefore, I now wanted to show you how um, the live the data is. I'm now freezing the view and putting on the machine. So you can follow um, the process of this IoT data. As I'm starting now the live data at a machine, the live data um, of the bottle quality count will increase. And you will see that right now. And as you have seen here, the bottle counter increased. And another interesting, very interesting um, thing is that we can also you know, set thresholds so that the label get um, read, as you can see at the CPU, or CPU load down below. Another interesting variable we have integrated is the bell speed, which is also um, seen in the AR application. So you can think about several more um, interesting sensors that, have, that can be shown in the augmented reality um, application. So it's quite simple, isn't it? 